Golden State Media Concepts Sci-Fi Podcast. Together we dive into the world of sci-fi and science fiction. From episodes of Star Trek, Star Wars, to The Walking Dead, Resident Evil, all the hot new science fiction movies from the back doors of Marvel or DC. The Golden State Media Concepts Sci-Fi Podcast. You'll never look at science fiction the same way again. Welcome to the GSMC Sci-Fi Podcast with your favorite host, Ryan Holloway. In case you didn't know, yesterday was a really big deal. It was a big deal because you want to know why? Do you want to know why it was a big deal? I'm going to tell you why it was a big deal. For the first time ever, ever in the history of AMC, Walking Dead and Fear the Walking Dead, they had a crossover. They had an actual crossover. I'm going to get into that in just a moment. This is what I need to tell you guys. In case you haven't seen The Walking Dead season yet, or you haven't seen the Fear of the Walking Dead premiere yet, which if you saw the Fear of the Walking Dead premiere, I would imagine that you saw the finale. So I'm going to just give you a quick break. Just take a break from here and just breathe for a minute. I'm going to let you take a minute to just breathe. So while you're doing that and like turning this off, while you're turning this off, I'm going to give you a little heads up about something. I had something happen to me the other day that I thought was um, kind of just a little bit weird, just a little weird. I was a little weird, a little weird. I was driving, right? And minding my own business out of the stop sign and my car got hit with the can. Like somebody hit my car with the can and I looked outside and there was a bum. A bum hit my car with the can. I'm like, yo, and he just stood there and there was nothing I could do. There was absolutely nothing that I could do. You ever been in a situation where you just can't do anything? That's what I did. I was just in a situation where I couldn't do anything about it. It's kind of like this. You're in a situation where you have nothing to gain and everything to lose. What am I going to gain by getting out of my car and fighting a bum? Nothing. So what I do, I wave my fist at him and said, you pesky bums. Hopefully that intro story gave you enough time to leave before I spoiled the whole Walking Dead season for you. Are you ready? Okay, this is how this is how this how it goes. My primary concern about Walking Dead was we're just dealing with this war forever, right? We're dealing with this war forever and it's never it's never ending. For like um for years, right? For years, right, you guys? Because I feel like I feel like last year, that's when Negan brought that casket and then Sasha was already dead in the casket, right? Then the year before that, he hit their heads with the bat. You you know, like all that stuff. And we've been dealing with this war for years. So my thing about the finale was like, oh my God, what are you guys gonna do now? Like I need I need something to be done with this, right? So this it it kind of had a little twist at it kind of had a little twist that I didn't really see coming. I'm gonna tell you guys how this episode ends. I'm gonna give you my feedback on the whole thing. Obviously, Negan knew that Dwight was gonna send a map of what they were going to do over to the hilltop so that he could basically just snitch on him, right? That's what that was the plan, correct? Okay. But Negan knew that Dwight was going to do that, so they out hustled them. And basically, Negan had some of his troops that didn't know what was really going to go on. He had them with some fake plans. Rick, Rick and the group, the Hilltop, and all them, Alexandria, they hijacked Negan's other group, killed them, and took the map. I'm like, oh, we know where Negan's going to be at right now. At one point, Negan even says, "I'm sorry, I had to. I'm sorry that I had to sacrifice my own people for the greater good, but this is just what I had to do." The hilltop and all of them, they arrive to this area where Negan's at. They have they have the upper ground. Negan on all the Negan and all the Negans. All the saviors are at the top of the hill. And, and Rick and all the people are at the bottom of the hill. They're ready to empty the whole clip on the hilltop. The whole clip. They're ready to shoot all these guns at that the preacher. And oh, what's that guy's name? Uh, is his name Dwayne? It's not Dwayne. Oh, I forget the guy's name. I forget the scientific guy's name. Sorry, guys. I forgot his name. But we're going to call him mullet and we're going to talk about the preacher. Oh, father Gabriel. So father Gabriel and, and mullet man, they were making the bullets. They had a whole like bullet making factory. Correct. Okay. When the saviors go to basically shoot these guns, all the guns explode because like they made bad bullets, which I didn't really see coming. I, I thought, 
I didn't I didn't know that I didn't really know that he was going to team. It was a great twist. I'll just I'll just say that. I'll just say it was a great twist and that's how it worked out. Rick runs up on Negan cuz it's one of those situations, right? I feel like I found out that every single time that every single time that Negan gets in a situation where he doesn't he doesn't have like a gun, he just runs away, which was kind of which was kind of like it was kind of whack. It was kind of whack because because the problem was like the guns that work so Negan grabs his back and like runs away, which I'm so terrible. It's for Eugene. Okay, sorry guys. My producer just told me the guy's name is Eugene. All right. So Eugene. Eugene and Father Gabriel made these fake bullets that blew up in everyone's faces. And then Negan runs away. Like I'm so so tired to see Negan run away. At the end of every season that we see, Negan's running away. Right? He ran away from the tiger last time. It's always a problem. Anyway, Negan runs away. Rick chases him down. They square up. Rick cuts Negan's throat. We think Negan dies. I myself thought Negan died. I tweeted out Negan died, but he didn't. Apparently, Rick said, hey, we got to save him. They put some tape around his throat and they decide to save Negan. Right. And then Rick is like, hey, Negan, this is what you're going to do. You're going to be an example of what's going to be different and how we don't have to kill people anymore. So apparently Negan's like the first ever prisoner or jail person or inmate of the whole Walking Dead era. That's Rick and Michonne's plan. What ended up happening, though, was when Negan was sitting there like dying. Maggie was like, we have to end this and we have to kill him. We have to kill him. He killed my husband. We have to kill him. They're like, no, no, it's not going to be that way. So Michonne is like holding Maggie like you can't do anything about it. So in my mind, I'm like, man, all right. Well, part of me was part of me was was semi upset that Negan was dead when I thought he was dead. And I was like, man, oh, man. And then Rick was Rick decided to save him. I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. Because in a way, I'm in a way, like, I'm just kind of happy that they didn't kill off another villain because the villains just keep dying, right? Like the governor, and then I don't know, there was another guy, and the people from the people from Terminus that were eating people. They always just keep killing off the villains. This time, they're going to keep the villain. They're going to put him in jail, which is cool. I'm with it. And I was like, but what do we do with this? Like, what actually happens with this now? We flash forward a little bit and Maggie is sitting in the office with Norm with Norman Reedus and with Jesus. I'm sorry, with Daryl. Maggie is in the office with Daryl and Jesus are like, hey, you know what? We're gonna show him what's really popping. Rick and Michonne had no right to do that. Negan should be dead. We're gonna show him what's popping. And I'm like, ooh. I'm like, ooh, that's cool. That's cool. I like it. So it's gonna be, there's finally gonna be like some in, there's gonna be some internal beef. Within Rick's, within Rick's whole staff, record label, and crew. I can appreciate that. I like that. So that's pretty much how the episode ended. I'm going to give you I'm gonna give you my take on all that as soon as I get back. We got to pay a little bill. And then when I get back, you guys are going to hear a lot more of this. Again, if you just turn this on, I don't know how you would just turn on a podcast. Maybe, you really, maybe you're really in love with the number 815. And you decide to turn it on at 8 minutes and 15 seconds. So it's like, hey, I want to hear what's going on. In case you did do that. I'm letting you know I'm talking about The Walking Dead and I don't want to spoil it for you. So go away or listen. No, no, no. Don't ever go away. Stay here. I'll be right back. Check out the show that's built on the MMA from the UFC to extreme cage fighting. They got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G- smcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the GSMC Sci-Fi Podcast with your favorite host, Ryan Holloway. In case you didn't know, we're doing a little review of The Walking Dead and The Walking Dead season finale and The Fear of the Walking Dead return. Now, now that we're done with all that, I gave you guys the whole recap. This is how I felt about it. I w- at first, I was a little sad that Negan died. I tweeted out, oh my God, Negan died, but he didn't die. He's going to be like the first prisoner ever on 
Walking Dead, basically. Like, Rick has, like, this dream of having a jail, I guess. Which is really interesting because the way this whole thing started, the way this whole thing started, right? One of the things that Rick says is, I killed and you killed, but we're going to put you in prison for the things that you did to people. Now, Negan did do some evil stuff. Like, Negan... Negan smashed open a couple people's heads with bats and he also threw a doctor inside of an oven. Rick doesn't know about that. Maybe he does. I don't know. But Rick, um, Negan threw a doctor in the oven, like in the furnace downstairs. It was crazy. I don't know if you saw it or not, but he did that. He also did that thing to Dwight's face. He like he burned his face. So Negan's done some pretty awful things. However, however, I see why Rick is doing this because Rick has to go back to being a sheriff because that's what he is. Like Rick is the police in case you guys didn't know. So my thing is the reason this whole thing popped off was when Rick and Alexandria, when his squad met the Hilltop, Hilltop was like, yeah, if you go kill Negan's group, then we'll share this food with you. And Rick's like, okay, where are they at? And Jesus is like, oh, they're over there somewhere. If you go do that, we'll have your back. And he's like, okay, like Rick and his boys run up inside this, run up inside this outpost and just kill like 20 of Negan's guys. We don't even know who Negan is at this point. We have no idea. But Rick and them just do this because they're told they make a deal. And then it turns out Negan's group is bigger than it actually is. So when Negan decides to like murk Glenn and Carrot Top, uh, we're all mad because like on our end, we're supposed to be Rick's group, like the people watching the show. But realistically, Rick's squad like ran up in the spot and like killed like 20, 30 of Negan's people just on strength. So. It's interesting that Rick now wants to be wants to say, oh, I've killed and you've killed. But, you know, since we're different people and now you got to go to jail because what you've done, to people has been evil. Like, really? Really? Because I feel like Negan did have Rick's son and then brought him back after Rick's son tried to, like, empty a whole clip into Negan. So it's I don't know. It's a it's a very unique dichotomy that goes on between both of these individuals, which I think is fine. I think it's fine because Jeffrey D. Morgan does a great job playing this character, and I, I would have hated to see him go. I really would have. He has a lot of he has a lot of character, really intimidating, um, and his jacket is really cool. He wears a dope jacket. Um, it's that leather jacket he wears is outstanding. No, no lie, no lie at all. So with that, we also have Maggie. And Daryl and Jesus sitting in the in the in the office like, yeah, we're going to show Rick what's really good. We're going to show him what's up because Maggie feels like Negan should be just done because of what he did to Glenn. So we can end it and make the whole thing be over. But apparently some people don't feel that way. So we're going to have some internal beef. It's going to be some internal beef. Now, that was the season finale. Nothing. I'm not going to say that nothing happened. What I'm going to tell you guys is what happened was. We have a conclusion to this war because it seems like a lot of the saviors are okay with like no longer with no longer being saviors. It seems like everyone's okay with like working together, but there will be some internal strife with Maggie and Rick, it seems like. But with all that, what we did get out of this was the first ever crossover situation in the Walking Dead universe. Like Morgan is officially crossing over from walking dead over to fear the walking dead which based on timeline i didn't really know how they were going to do that the way they do it is morgan goes back to the trash to the dump and he tells that lady that lives there he says hey you know what rick wants you to go back over to the place you should go over there and camp there rick wants you to go there and she's like oh great i'll get my things you know and the trash lady her oh great i'll get my things we can go together and morgan's like nah i'm gonna just stay here i don't want to i don't want to deal with them anymore i'm good so Morgan's doing this whole thing. If you guys don't remember, Carol did this a while ago. Carol was like, I can't be around people because when I'm around people, I kill people. That's a very, that's a very bad Carol impression. But she's basically saying, I can't be around people because I want to protect them. And when I'm around them, I have to kill people. I don't want to kill people anymore. So it's best for me to not be around anybody. She went through this whole thing. And then Morgan like begged her to be around people. And now Morgan's doing the same thing. I don't want to be around anybody. So I get why they did this to move him over to Fear the Walking Dead. It just feels so familiar. Like these emotions, they feel so repeated because we've already seen it once. You know, like, do you remember this big thing that uh, King Ezekiel and Morgan went through to try to get Carol to come back around people? Like she's living in that house by herself. People were bringing her fruit. She's like, I need everyone to stay away from me. I can't be around people. Remember that? Okay. So that's basically what Morgan is doing. Morgan's at the dump and he's just decided to chill there by himself. End episode. We're going to fear the walking dead, right? Episode starts. Morgan's at the dump all by itself. And then Rick and Carol and who else comes? Does one other person come? No. 
Rick and Carol come. Rick and Carol come and they're like, hey, you should come back. Like, no, I don't want I don't want to come back. I can't be around people. I don't want anything to do with it. I don't want to be there anymore. La, 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 la. They keep bothering him. Rick says something like, hey, you can run, but you can't hide. So it gets to Morgan and then he ends up saying, all right, fine, I'll just run. So he leaves Virginia. He leaves Virginia and somehow ends up all the way in, let's say, the West Coast somewhere. It seems like he's out West, wherever the further Walking Dead people are at. I don't know if it's Mexico now or Texas or Arizona. Nobody knows. But it's a great idea, the whole crossover thing, especially like bringing Morgan over. My only problem with it, again, is that these emotions are so familiar. Like when Carol wanted to be a, when Carol wanted to be alone. I feel like even Morgan even did this on his own once before. Like Morgan went off on his own before and then came back when they were um when they were when the Alexandria was fighting the wolves. Remember the wolves, the people that were just living in the forest and they would come in like not 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 terminus, not the people that would eat people, but the wolves that would hop the fence. Those guys. So it it's just we've dealt with these emotions before and it's kind of the same thing because it was really when Carol was going through it, it was really heavy. Remember when Carol was like killing people when she was crying about it after it was a big deal. And Carol was even Carol even ran off. Carol ran off to like try to die. And Morgan, did this thing of like try to Morgan, like tracked her down and everything. It was a really big deal. Like we dealt with this before. Now to deal with it again, it's like, come on, writers. Can it be something else? Can he have like. Could have Morgan have like killed a kid and felt guilty about it just to do this whole I can't be around people thing. It's so tiring. It was so tiring. And I was low key. I was getting I'm getting a little frustrated with it at first. However, after his travels of getting from Virginia all the way to the other side to where the fear of the walking dead people are at, he ends up <laughs> he ends up meeting a guy. The guy says that he can chill with them. Morgan says, no, I don't want to hang out with you. Morgan basically gets kidnapped by some other guys. The guy that he met originally shows like, Hey man, that's my friend. They both get kidnapped by these guys. This lady in this, this lady in this SWAT truck who has guns in it. She trades noodles to get Morgan and his new friend. Correct. Okay. While they're all hanging out, the woman says, Hey, the woman's name is Al. He says, Hey, I, I saved you guys. So you guys owe me. And what I want to do, I just want to record. I just want to record some stuff. I want to hear your stories and know where you're from. You can go. And Morgan's like, no, I don't want to record any stories. I don't want to answer any questions. So I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. Like really? Like his, his, his grumpiness is really growing to be like, oh, come on, dude. Like why, why they write this like this? <laughs> like, and I could just, I could maybe just be very, very impatient of like the story developing, but for him to just be, so I don't want to be around anybody. Thanks for saving me, but I don't want to be around anybody. They do the interview or whatnot, and they get like they get ran up on by a few other people. Morgan does some. It's I'm not going to give the scene up for you, but basically the three of them get they get basically ambushed by ten guys, and the fight scene is incredible. Morgan's doing. Morgan gets shot in the leg, still hits a guy with a stick. It's great. It's great. Eventually, end up all hanging out together. They end up all hanging out together because Morgan can't get very far with his leg the way it is. He's like, all right, I'll hang out with you guys until my leg is better. Just give me some time, okay? All right. Now they're driving down the street, roaring down the street, just cruising this big SWAT truck. There's a lady laying in the street. You know, it's a setup because we've all watched Walking Dead enough to know that there's a woman just basically laying there crying, scared for no reason at all. It's probably a setup. And who is it? Our original Fear the Walking Dead group. And they run up on her. They run up on they run up on Morgan's new group. String Stringer Stringer His name isn't Strings Is it Stringer or Strand Strand That's his name Strand Strand comes out of the bushes His whole squad comes out the bushes And they're at gunpoint And the episode ends Now I don't know how this timeline works Like I don't know how long Morgan was on the road Maybe 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 because he was on the road for so long That's why he doesn't want to talk to anybody At all About anything That could be it it could be it because when Morgan first meets his first meets his friend, he fought the, when the guy is talking in the forest, cause he hears Morgan, the guy's talking for us. Like, Hey, if you're out there, I have popcorn. I'm looking for friends. The guy's using his voice and he, it's his voice is off because he's like, I haven't used my voice in a while. So I don't know how long Morgan was on the road, but I don't know how long he's on the road for the times to match for them to be. I just, I just, I just don't know. I'm just, I'm not sure. I really don't. 
I'm not 100% sure. And I feel like when we watch Fear of the Walking Dead, we're looking at like we're looking at this as the first breakout, right? So we're looking at this as probably like we're probably two maybe 2 years, a year and a half in to the fir- to the br- to the outbreak of people just being zombies versus Fear versus Walking Dead. We've been playing this game for like what, 8 years now. So it might it might be a little different. It might be a little bit different. So I don't know how the timelines actually line up, but I was really excited to see, to see, I guess, new characters. That's what I like about Fear the Walking Dead. There's always just new people randomly. And it's, how do I say? It's, um, it's always refreshing because Fear the Walking Dead always has new people on it. That That's what I liked about it. Now, I will give you, I'm going to tell you guys a tidbit of why they probably did this this way. I'm going to give you a, a small tidbit. Um, I don't. And I think this is right. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm going to tell you why I think they did this. Be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Sci-Fi Podcast with your favorite host, Ryan Holloway. We're going to go ahead and wrap up the recap of the Walking Dead season finale along with the season premiere of Fear the Walking Dead. Now, as I told you, you guys probably already knew this, but they crossed Morgan over from Walking Dead over the Fear the Walking Dead. I'm going to tell you why I think they did this. This is why. I think I know why they did it. Now, when we watch The Walking Dead, similar to with... I was talking about this. I was talking about this a little bit earlier with with Rick's group. When Rick's group originally met Negan, it's because they were told by the hilltop, like, "Hey, we'll give you some food if you go to this outpost and kill these guys." And then Rick's group went and killed like twenty of twenty thirty of Negan's people without even knowing them, no provocation, nothing. Ran, ran in there while they were asleep and just let them guys let them have it. And we don't see that as evil because we're on Rick's side. Like we're Rick's group, right? As like the watchers. Now as the viewers, as the fans, the staff, the record label, the whole crew, I think the reason they moved Negan, not Negan. The reason they moved Morgan over to fear the walking dead was for us to have an actual conflict as viewers. Cause if you watch the beginning of this episode, Morgan and his new group, these two people, they make, they seem, they're all nice people. Like they, and they show us that pretty fast. Like the woman, Al, she's recording her story. She has, she's a journalist and has a camcorder. She wants to record everyone's story and she trades food for people so like she can get their story. It's pretty interesting. Like, cause Negan, I'm sorry, Morgan and the other guy, they were going to die unless, unless Al gave, basically gave them food for her. Now, well, it was actually at gunpoint. It wasn't really a trade. And the other guy, he was just in a tent somewhere and just really wanted to make friends. And you see he's super nice because he basically, he sacrifices his life to save Morgan when Morgan gets kidnapped by these other guys. So you, you already kind of, you spend the hour getting to know these characters. Now, they get stopped by our original Fear the Walking Dead group. Our group that has went to places and basically destroyed people's lives. But they're our group, Strand and the whole Fear the Walking Dead gang. And I think they did this whole crossover so that we can have feelings for both groups, right? So I don't know if Morgan and the Strand group are going to eventually be friends or if they're going to probably take them prisoner or well, I don't know what's going to happen. But it's, 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 I think it's, hmm. I think it's very unique. It's a great twist on things for us to be on the side of the captured. Of course, those times like when Rick 
and the squad got kidnapped by Terminus and they were at Terminus for like, I don't know, probably like three episodes. They got kidnapped there. They had to make a great escape. They've had things like that, but it's, but never, never to the point where people are kidnapped and then we know the kidnappers and then we also know the kidnappee. And I believe that's why they're doing that. And I'm under the assumption that this is going to turn out really good. Like I, I'm pretty happy about it. I was, I was genuinely disappointed when they just said they were going to do a crossover. Cause whenever I see crossovers on a lot of television shows, um, it, I mean, I'm not going to say they're not good, but they're just not, they're kind of unneeded. You know, they do that a lot on, they do that a lot on the, on the Chicago shows, like in the Chicago med and Chicago fire and Chicago PD. And honestly it's entertaining. I just, it's just kind of like the crossover and it, it's, it's it's usually a bigger deal than it actually is. Like you can keep your same cast. It seems like it's a way to just make to just kind of be kind of lazy with a story for the most part. Not lazy. Let me not say that because I'm like creating things is not the easiest thing in the world. So let me not say lazy. It's a convenient way to knock out a story in two hours instead of making two separate stories for two hours. It makes sense and it's entertaining. So why not? I was concerned when Walking Dead was going to do it because this isn't a crossover for one episode. They're really, they're really putting Morgan on a completely different, different series, different show. I'm still kind of confused about the times, but maybe we're going to learn more about the times next episode. when We find out if it's been two years since the bridge exploded. Cause on fear the walking dead, the last time the season ended was when they were basically the water God was going to execute our original group, like on the bridge, but then the bridge exploded and we were all set. And then after that, we don't know what happened. So I guess they're going to tell us more about the split up of the family, probably in the next episode. And we'll find out. So that's that. I hope that if you didn't see it yet, I didn't ruin it for you. No, no. Here's the thing. If you didn't see, if you didn't see either of these episodes and you already heard this, I appreciate you because that means that you rather hear my voice than listen to the episode. So thanks for that. But if you still haven't seen them, still go watch them though. Cause there's little tidbits and nuances and language that are used. That'd be very helpful. We'll into the next episode. And I don't think you'll be disappointed and they connect really well. The way they end at walking dead and then connect it to fear the walking dead. It connects. It connects. Well, they do a, they do a good job. It's not, it's not one. Of the, it's not a tacky crossover. You know what I mean? Like you guys have seen tacky crossovers. Like, hey, we're gonna put in this character, and then we're gonna say he's from here, and just it's gonna work itself out. You guys have seen that before, right? We're not. It's not like that. It's not like that. Like putting, putting like Steve Urkel on Full House, like, <laughs> like that. Type. It's not like that. It's not. So take my word for it. I hope that you watch both episodes. You should watch both episodes, and I'd appreciate it. Now, listen. When I get back, when I get back next week, it will be. When I get back next week, it will be one week until all Earth breaks loose and Infinity War is going to drop. What I'm also going to do for you next week, I'm going to I've I really want to see this movie Ready Play, Ready Player One. I really want to see it. I'm going to see it. I'm going to tell you guys about it. I'm also tell you about the new about the next Fear the Walking Dead. All that. So until then, live long, prosper, watch out for potholes. This has been your favorite host, Ryan Holloway, with the GSMC Sci-Fi Podcast. Goodbye.